Hey everybody, welcome back to the Your Warfare Group. This is Juice. So today's video is going to be a promotional video for the Razbam Terrain Teams. New South Atlantic map released in DCS a couple weeks ago. And just recently, last week, we saw the release of the South Atlantic Assets Pack, which was supposed to, was supposed to be part of the initial release, but it didn't make it into the to the final release on release days. But it was pretty close behind, about a week and a half later. And so we'll be covering some of that today. And I won't go into the details of what the assets pack includes or anything, uh, because you can find other videos, which I will link. Uh, Tactical Pascal's video on that, and I'll also link you a video for Red Kite. So, in this map, or in this video, I should say, uh, as with some other videos that we have produced on the Air Warfare Group about uh, recommending certain modules or recommending certain tech, like the supercarrier, uh, in this case, just like we do with Nevada, we're recommending a map for you, and, and we're going to tell you why you should consider getting this map. Uh, I was on the fence so to speak with my comments early on because I did not want um, I did not want my involvement in the test team uh, with Rasbam to sway your opinion of what my opinion would be on this map so uh, I did not say anything pro or negative about it in the comments for about two three weeks after the map came out uh, because I wanted to wait and see what the general public thought about this map and so with that what I did is I uh, I actually um, kind of you know garnished my my thoughts and uh, and basically took some time to fly it and feel it with uh, in multiplayer and in single player uh, I've been flying a lot as a matter of fact prickly hedgehog who is a uh, youtuber you guys may know from the weekly set rep and other videos he is also a member of the air warfare group one of our line pilots over here and he and i were both on the test team together uh, and i just want to say working with rasbam terrain team was a challenge but also very rewarding uh, getting to know the guys we were kind of new into the mix we knew uh, specter and team uh, a little bit of the guys for a few you know a few months before we got on the test team back in january however uh, you have to really, you know, you have to take time to get to know people, and we got time to know Spectre and uh, his team, and those guys are like so uh, open to input from the testers. Uh, they will, no, nothing is too uh, too unimportant to talk about. Uh, they really did a good job at taking our feedback, and you'll see that in some of the improvements that we were able to recommend for airport environments and stuff like that. So working with Spectre and the team was pretty uh, pretty great. Uh, as a matter of fact, I thought once the map released, the testing part was over. But no, we are we are still involved, still doing a lot of stuff. So this map is huge. Uh, I won't bore you with the exact exact numbers. You can look it up. It, it is a it to, you know taking off from the other side of Argentina, or other side of Chile, or South Argentina. It takes us a good 45 minutes to 50 minutes at cruise, you know, 350 cruise at 20,000 feet to get to the other side of the map, to get to uh, to Port Stanley and to the, uh, the Falkland Islands. Um, when I fly around the Falkland Islands, I actually get the feeling that I'm flying when I used to fly in Iceland about 20, 25 years ago in the back of the Pavehawks. I get the feeling that I'm back in Iceland on a summer day. Uh, a lot of the same, you know, subarctic scenery that we used to see in Iceland. Uh, the geographic location of this, latitude-wise, uh, is um, about 57 degrees, and uh, Iceland was at we were flying at around 64 degrees. So it's very close, very similar. Um, the terrain down here is dominated by the weather, which is windswept and uh, very short growing season. So that's why you'll see uh, vegetation that is kind of uh, period like well, I should say seasonal like uh, but the the neat thing about it is the devs worked on this map for over two years from initial concept and, and through its growth to basically do as much research not on the Falklands conflict per se there was a lot of consideration in that experience and a lot of these guys that worked on it served in the Royal Forces and and were stationed down here including Pascal um, and they know what it looks like from the ground. So they put a lot of that effort into uh, making this map so that they could make it partly from their experience, 
uh, partly from what you can get in modern day from uh, Google Earth and from what the terrain looks like uh, actually now. And then also there was a lot of input from the developers to spruce up the map to make it DCS quality as far as more advanced markings on the runways, longer runways. Uh, you know, if you go and look at some of the airfields on this map, you look at the real airfields, they're pretty close, but there are some deviations that were for the better. Uh, and I really wholeheartedly supported that because uh, making the airport, airport environments, uh, the, especially the military ones, more aesthetically pleasing for DCS World. Kind of like what we saw when we went from the Caucasus map to the, norm, uh, from the, to the Nevada map in uh, DCS 2.0 when we got the Edge game engine. So I won't plug that map anymore, but if you do, do get a chance, go back and look at our video on the Nevada map. We've got a few in there. One of the expansions that we'd like to work on with that real quickly is to get Nevada considered for expansion on space and add a few more military airfields like China Lake, like Fallon Naval Air Station, and possibly even Edwards Air Force Base or George Air Force Base. So, especially if we get the F-4s, it'd be nice to have George. So back to this map. Uh, this map, it, it's really neat because there's not a lot of redundancy on the ground. Uh, as a matter of fact, all, uh, painstakingly uh, effort the you know the the development team worked uh, tirelessly hours 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 on top of hours um, you know they, they were pretty whipped but uh, they worked on this to make sure that we got a fresh experience uh, from our last few desert maps uh, with the terrain and all the considerations that were put into uh, this map that match the area wholeheartedly. Uh, you'll see the rocks were designed to look that way, uh, the way they were supposed to be. You'll see that the, um, the uh, ocean water, the way the swells work and everything like that. One of the neat things about this map is if you set the, the map day and night cycle at the right times of the year, you will see that you have very little daylight in the winter time and a lot of daylight in the summertime. And again, if you're in the northern hemisphere, those seasons are flip-flopped. Uh, so if you go ahead and put June 21st in this map, you'll notice that you get about seven hours of daylight, usable daylight, where you can actually sit outside and read a book. Uh, in the uh, wintertime, which is uh, our, our December up in the northern hemisphere, their December is, their winter is in June, you can set it for December 21st on the solstice, and you will actually see that there is a um, that there is a um, uh, difference in daylight where you get that 21 hours of daylight uh, during the summertime. It's pretty amazing. You'll also notice that the elevation of the sun in the sky is pretty spot on as far as where it should be, uh, and you'll also notice that the shadows and the shadow effects are where they should be. So this map is, I consider, probably going to be one of the best maps in DCS World when it gets done. And the reason I say that is it has opened up so many new um, considerations for terrain making uh, in the use of photorealistic you know, satellite imagery and then allowing that to capture the aviance of the map or the essence of the map. And then the developers basically use that uh, that as a base to build upon. And so when, when we move into the whole world map like Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 did, uh, cloud-based updates and, and, and storage, we will definitely get to a point where uh, DCS World will be a very smooth integrated program, uh, possibly even with a new game engine that absorbs a lot of our PC's potential and make it into the map that we've always dreamed of. Uh, we've been talking in the forums, a lot of us, for years. Uh, I'm, my tenure here is only about seven or eight years in DCS World, but the, you know, some of you guys, I, I did start in the, um, in the lock-on modern air combat, but I took some time off and traveled overseas and did not have access to DCS World until about 2014. So in that time, in the last eight years, uh, you guys have showed me uh, that the community is passionate for development of DCS, uh, the enjoyment. Ag again, if you go back into our video history, you'll see that there is a video called What is DCS to You? And it's one of many things 
Uh, I often tell people DCS is a simulator of many things, a video game of many things, however it's not War Thunder. And I say that with no disregard for War, Thumb, War Thunder, but DCS is so diverse, so capable, and teams like Razbam are just making that even better. So I will sign off here and let you guys fly around and just see some stuff. I'm going to go ahead and mute myself, let you guys see the flight to the landing, and see some of the assets. Take, take particular note of some of the vehicles you'll see on the ground, some of the markings on the airfields, and some of the static uh, devices that you'll see around. And have a good day. I'll let you guys watch the rest of the video.